Copilot or agents inside of Tableau. In my previous video, I was very critical, but actually in Tableau prep, I think this is actually a great feature. To find out why I've turned 180, as ever, let's get stuck in. Okay, so we're here in Tableau prep in the cloud. Um, Copilots are only available in the cloud or agents are only available in the cloud in web authoring. So we're in Tableau prep in the web authoring setup. Now, at least Tableau prep, has a very comparable experience between web authoring and desktop. So I've already gone ahead and connected to a sample data set. Um, if I just minimize this sidebar here, we'll get a bigger view. And when we connect to the prep step, as it were, this, um, this sort of preparation segment here, you get a preview of the data. And one of the things I wanted to call out about this feature is that um, you've actually already been able to get recommendations from Tableau Prep about what you should do. And this is just based on looking at your data. Those recommendations live here. They have this sort of little light bulb option. And you can see you get some hints. And as you click on these hints, it gives you an example of what it's going to do. You hit apply and it applies it to that step. So that clean step now has that calculation applied to it. To see that calculation, you can see that here. But the Einstein Copilot or Tableau Agent capability inside of Tableau Prep only lives inside of the calculation window. Unlike desktop where it's on the top right and in the calculation window, in Tableau Prep, it's only inside of the calculation window. So when I open it up, you can see it's right here and it starts off a conversation. And I think it's actually quite a nice uh, experience. Now, the thing about this instance of Einstein Copilot and this capability in general. I don't think this is an agent. This to me is still a co-pilot, but hey, we'll call it a Tableau agent for now. The thing about this is it's focused because it's only in the calculation window. I think it does a better job than the desktop equivalent, which tries to do a bunch of other things in charts and therefore goes wrong more often. So if we just focus on calculations, um, we're gonna ask it to do a couple of things. So first of all, I'm gonna ask it to split the order field in a specific way. So let's say I don't know how to do this and I just want some help writing a calculation to split the order field. You can see the order field is just here on the left-hand side. It's uh, US 2019-103-800. So uh, can you split out the order field and just keep the first uh, two letters and the last six characters Okay, so that's a very simple question. Now I made a mistake and I hit apply down here thinking that's what you've got to do. It is not, that will create you an empty calculation. You can see that actually is exactly what it's done and it's created an error. You can just see that faded out. What you need to do is click on this small uh, button here, this envelope send paper airplane icon. I never know why it's that. And um, yeah, it basically writes a calculation, but it does highlight one specific thing, which is, if you're very prescriptive about how you write it, then you'll end up getting exactly what you've asked for. The way I wrote that calculation was as if I was someone who knows something about the split function and exactly what I'm trying to do. So I was almost too descriptive, if that makes sense. So if I go ahead and select the replace calculation, you'll see that it puts it into the calculation window right here. If I then click apply, we can actually test if this works because the calculation will appear here in calculation one. And you can see that it's kept it and it's kind of done the right thing. So it's taken the first two and the last few bits. And then we can go ahead and add uh, whatever other thing we wanted to add. Now, what we can do is we can say, um, let's try a follow on question. So uh, can you add a hyphen in the middle? Just so we can sort of see if we can tune this to work um, with some prompts that I'm giving it rather than me having to go out and write the calculation. So you can see that it has actually done that and we can go ahead and replace the calculation. We go ahead and hit apply and that fix has been applied. So for me, I think this is very powerful for people who are inside of Tableau prep and they're just trying to get some help with calculation. And that I think was actually faster than having to think and you know go find all the functions and test it out and make sure you're doing all the right things. I was able just to turn a simple sentence into a calculation and it's correct. I can see the results immediately and I can actually go down across the whole entire data and preview it. And I actually learn a few things about the function and how it's being done. So I can take that knowledge away and use it as a reference. I think it's actually a great idea that it's right here next to the reference pane because once you've used the uh, the function in Einstein, you can go ahead and check the function here and just search, well, what does the left uh, calculation do and get a description. So having these two side by side, I think this is the sweet spot for this capability. And it's, I like that it's super focused. So 
That's a very simple example. Um, let's go ahead and change this up. I'm not going to create a new calculation. We'll just stay in here and just test what it can do. I've got some other uh, elements here. So what I'll, what I'll ask is, look, hey, um, can you write a date calculation to shift the date by um, three weeks for the order date? Yeah. Now, I've written this in the wrong place, so I'll just go ahead and grab this and I'll put it in here. So can you write a calculation uh, to shift the date by three weeks? Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I hit save. I made, I made that uh, faux pas mistake myself. Oh, wow, that's uh, that's kind of really bad. Let's go ahead and put this here. Hit send. That is probably something they have to change from a UX and um, UI perspective, right? That's never going to um uh, work so yeah it's gone and done a date add week and it's gone three order date and then if i go ahead and replace the calculation hit apply and uh, we look at our order dates we've got here the first of depends what kind of dates this is if this is the third of january 2019 i think it is the third of january 2019 so add three weeks onto that and you do get that and actually brings it back as a date time calculation whenever you do a date add it always brings back the time component and you can truncate this to just the date so um, i can ask it uh, can you truncate that to just the date no time so we can do a follow-on and the other thing is, I think the hit rate here is better. I don't know what they're doing differently here <laughs> compared to the one in desktop. But I do think there is something about this version that's just the way it writes calculations, the way it formats it, it's just a little bit more thought through compared to what we've seen in desktop, which I think has a bit of a forced sort of uh, interaction. So uh, I have done the truncation, but it's still coming through as a uh, date time. And I think it's actually not the... Um, it's not that there is actually a time component. If I just briefly hit save, I think the data type here has been pre-done as uh, date and time in the first place. So the only way to get around that is to change it. You see that actually adds an additional step here to change the data type. Um, so that's, that's just something to sort of be aware of. I tried to do it in the calculation, but in actual fact, I needed to change the data type. So that's uh, something to look at. Okay, so what we'll do, because we don't want to cause any errors, let's just delete that step, go back in here and we'll close this. I want to do something a little bit more challenging. Um, I've actually written a prompt and this is a this is the type of calculation where you're like, okay, this is going to be really tough. So can you create a running total grouped by customer? Okay, and so to do that, you've got to think of it in a couple of ways. Running total grouped by customer means that for each customer, I want a running total across their orders, across the entire data set. Okay, that's essentially what I've asked. Now, if I ask you, how would you do that in Tableau Prep? The way you'd think about doing that would require you to essentially build out the summary table for each customer. You probably want to visually sort the data, then go and do the running total using the running total calculation so you could see the result. And the thing is, you don't need to do that. You can actually just write the calculation and Tableau Prep will give you a preview that is actually matching of your request because the function itself does a little bit of sorting anyway. So if I go ahead and send that to Einstein Copilot, uh, in this case, Tableau Agent, sorry, I keep switching between those two terms, it correctly, write, it correctly writes a good calculation. So partition, customer ID, order by order date, ascending, running sum of cells. And so if we go ahead and replace the calculation and hit apply, we'll actually go ahead and uh, let that finish. We're going to get an error potentially because we might have dates in here. No, no, it's changed it, which is great. And I'll just zoom out here. And then what we'll do is we'll bring this up. Let's just bring this up and let's go to the table view. And if you just pay a little bit of attention to this, you can see that here, Natalie De Cherney is the customer. And if you look at the order date, it goes from 2019 all the way to 2022. And so if we go from top down in ascending order, this should be going from the smallest transaction, adding it up, and it should be slowly getting larger until you got the very last transaction here. So it's done it. It's worked. And that's been mapped onto the entire data set. So maybe if you wanted to have the running total of a customer's business over the entire data, you could have that as a separate column and then you could compare the value of the current transaction versus their running total or something like that to give you a context of like how big of an interaction was this customer's uh, sale compared to their lifetime history. Like if someone comes in and, you know, does 50% of what they've done in their lifetime in one transaction, you probably want to know that because something has happened, right? So that could be a really good thing to do. But anyway, regardless of that, that is actually, I don't think many people who use Tableau Prep 
every single day would get that calculation right the first time. But I think they could describe it very clearly. And you can see here, Einstein Copilot absolutely nailed it. So for me, this is a great experience. And actually, and this is this is this is sort of the upside here. This is a better way of writing the calculation because I'm just using human speak to get exactly what I need. And at least in my case, I can validate this and go and check it. And I'm, you know, I, I've got a very good understanding of how this works. For a new analyst, this might be more tricky to validate because we have to understand is you know the whole sort of complexity of what you're looking at. So the way the data is sorted, what exactly you're checking, what's the granularity of the data, what is a group by, what is a petition, what's the ordering by, and then what does the running sum in cells do? Like all of that, there's a lot of assumed knowledge there. And to be honest with you, if you're a new analyst, each one of those is probably in itself a five, 10 minute journey just to understand this very simple function. But nonetheless, uh, Tableau Agent, Einstein Copilot can write it for you. So I think this is a great feature. Um, I I think it's it's very nice. Now, the one thing I will say is that this doesn't come enabled by default. So in the next part of this video, I'm gonna show you how to enable this. Uh, you do have to do some work in the setting space. So let's take a look at that and see how it works. Okay, I'm back in my own Tableau Cloud instance. This is the Tableau Tim instance, as it were. If you go to settings, uh, you'll go to this general page. There's a bunch of settings in here that have been added over time. And more recently, we've had this section for Tableau Pulse been added. And this is important for enabling Tableau Pulse. I've already got a video on that. But all the Tableau AI capabilities, and this is where Salesforce's naming gets super annoying because Tableau AI is sort of this thing that sits out for all AI capabilities inside of um, Tableau, but it's powered by Einstein, which runs on the Einstein trust layer and it enables Einstein Copilot or Tableau agents. Oh my God, it's such a mess. Anyway, these capabilities don't come on by default. You have to go on and enable them. So I've already enabled Tableau Pulse. I have not enabled Tableau Prep suggestion calculations for your flow because I don't have it available in my Tableau Cloud instance. But if you do have it, um, to, to, to have it available, you have to have the Tableau Plus uh, license. That's the first requirement. And number two, you have to be in Tableau Cloud. Uh, that's another requirement. And then you have to be in web authoring. So this is like the, 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 the sort of the trinity of capabilities you need. A very sort of narrow set of people have all three of those. But nonetheless, if you have that, you can enable all of these web authoring and Tableau prep, and it will allow you to start to use Tableau prep, um, the Einstein Copilot Tableau agent capability inside of Tableau Cloud. So that's how the feature works. Very simple. I'm really looking forward to see how this uh, sort of evolves over time. I am largely far more positive about this implementation of Tableau Agents because I just think the focus just means that it's, it's it, it really helps you where you need it. And I think in Tableau Prep, the only place you need help really is the calculations because everything else is visual and it's nice to be able to see it. What I'm hoping they can do to it though, is they can suggest ways of changing up and optimizing your flow. So really helping people understand a better way of doing something just by analyzing the flow and making those suggestions and building out those segments of the flow as well so that you know you go on you look at a, a problem you type the problem you're trying to achieve and maybe it suggests two or three steps for you and shows you the outcome i think that would be a really constructive way to develop this further and again it narrows the scope a little bit more because that to me is a sort of separate set of problems but i think tablet can do it because behind the scenes this is all just sql being fired off to a database so anyway Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.